what are you really excited about right now, Joey, that you're tackling either, you know, with everything you're doing, it probably blends academia and eventually mm -hmm. the commercial world as well. Yeah, it's a good question. So as I said already, thinking a lot about this kind of connection between fine tuning, uh, retrieval, um, a little bit more on context. Uh, I'm excited about kind of visual language understanding. Uh, and I think, you know, computer vision is about to get radically transformed by these visual language models. The ability to, you know, take my entire photo album from my family vacation and then have it read the album, look at the album, convert it to words, tell a story, maybe put, you know, Ken Burns effects and a narrative around it, um, provide highlights. You know, th this, I think we're about to see kind of big changes in, in vision. Um, my research group has been working on that. Uh, autonomous driving is another area that kind of, it went quiet because of developments in LM or kind of a renewed focus in electric vehicles. But I think we're going to see that emerge again. Uh, and I'm kind of excited to see what these advances will do uh, for autonomous driving. Probably the hardest part of autonomous driving is actually understanding what other people will do, kind of the signals around you. It's this prediction problem. Um, and having kind of general foundation models might change that, that we could train on know, endless amounts of webcam data or uh, what's it called, the dash cam data or, you know, uh, the street view data. Um, so lots of opportunities to change autonomous driving. So that'll be exciting. And then my group has been thinking a lot about how to make neural networks treat data kind of more dynamically, differently. Uh, right now, LMs are kind of neat. Uh, they, uh, and, and they, they, you know, grow uh, based on your question, you'll get different kinds of answers, different amount of computation. But still, fundamentally, each token is treated the same. It runs to the 175 billion parameters predict you know, that the next word is the. Um, thinking more dynamically, like the next word is obviously the. You don't really need to ask 175 billion parameter run through you know, hundreds of GPUs to answer that question. Um, and so being more intelligent about how we switch between models, between uh, levels of complexity uh, to support interesting conversations, you know, use, technology, use advanced models when they're needed and not when they're not. Um, is a you know a big opportunity. There are a lot of challenges in making that opportunity real, uh, from you know how we use key value caches and kind of the underlying uh, uh, mechanics of these models. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see kind of where the world ahead, looking in different directions uh, for these kind of models and, and kind of new applications as well. Nice, very cool. I have no doubt that you'll continue to make an enormous impact as you have already in your, frankly, I mean, you're already, you're only really relatively early in your career. You just got tenure yeah. a couple of years ago. Uh, it's wild to think what you'll do in the rest of your career, which actually brings me to a question that I didn't prepare you for, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, you know, kind of going back to the gene comment thing that I was describing about, you know, mm -hmm. how quickly things change over a lifespan. We're, we're watching things change unbelievably quickly. Uh, you're playing a huge role in that personally. What kinds of things do you hope you might see in your lifetime that are, you know, far beyond what we have today? Like, you know, trying to project ahead, which obviously is going to be really hard. You're going to have huge error bars on anything mm -hmm. yeah. you say next. But what are like, what's like an amazing vision for how things could be a few decades from now? That, that's a great question. Um, you know, when I was going up for tenure, I started asking myself, am I doing research that's, that's forward thinking enough? Because it's, it's having impact, but it's having impact now. It should have impact in the future. Um, one of the things that got me started on, which uh, is something I'm, I'm excited to see succeed, it hasn't yet, um, is the use of these kinds of technologies to really tackle climate change. Uh, and one of the you know, I, I asked one of my grad students, how should we work on this? Should we use less data centers or, you know, is there something more profound? Um, and they came across some really cool work going on in, at Berkeley to design new materials to pull carbon out of the air um, and to build better batteries. Uh, and these new materials, uh, these metal organic frameworks uh, require uh, chemists to try millions of combinations of things to figure out, you know, whether or not it works. Uh, it, we don't, like the, the science of kind of predicting the capabilities of these materials uh, and whether or not they're synthetically accessible is not there. Um, and so maybe more broadly, will our advances in AI allow us to really push science, fundamental science forward um, and tackle what is probably the biggest challenges of our time? Um, so something like climate change. Uh, that I want to see. That's really hard to do. I started doing it. We failed so far, but hopefully we'll get better at it in time. Um, maybe the early the early hope I've seen and some of the work that we've you know, started to see a little success on is things like stable diffusion. Uh, turns out you can use that to create molecules too uh, and design the, the underlying structure with certain goals in mind. And, and maybe we can start to build foundation models of, you know, of chemistry, of molecular design 
that would change how we do that. Uh, same with medicine. Uh, CRISPR opens up new capabilities for what we can do, but now we have to you know, design the things that will solve the problems that we need to solve. Um, and, and again, maybe some of these AI technologies will help advance that so that we can you know, tackle some of the biggest medical problems of our time. Uh, autonomous driving, uh, people shouldn't be dying. I think people die every few minutes in automobile accidents in the United States. Uh, if we can make cars safer using these technologies, um, I'd be excited. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of race to make you know, smart taxis. I'm more excited about cars that don't crash. Um, just making, making the roads safer. Uh, making the roads safer reduces emissions because we have less accidents, less traffic. Um, so a lot of potential impact there as well.